Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're comparing two entry level graphics cards, the RTX 3050 6GB, the cut down version of the 3050 of course and the RX 6500 XT from AMD. Now both of these cards are fairly low power and they come in at around £150 thereabouts here in the UK. Both of them aren't without their problems of course and today I want to see which one is best for your gaming needs by testing five games in PCIe 4.0 and 3.0 modes. Reason being, of course, is that the 6500 XT uses only four PCIe 4.0 lanes, so if you're using it in an older PCIe 3.0 system, then you're gonna see lower performance. Let's get into it and see how these cards do against each other in a selection of games at 1080p. We need to talk about ray tracing, first of all both of them are capable of this, the 3050 is definitely the better choice for ray tracing but I'd leave it off for both. As you can see here we have Cyberpunk 2077, there's no exact benchmark figures because the difference is obvious uh, once you see it. The 3050 um, with RT medium, if you're using ray tracing you're going to want to use a higher preset to actually take advantage of the effects. We're actually getting sort of okay performance but as we uh, drive around a little more, more of that VRAM is used up with the 6 gig 3050 we're going to see a lot more dips and drops the whole thing is a very inconsistent experience it's better than the 6500 xt though because if we look here yeah we're not really getting playable frame rates with the same settings albeit with fsr balanced enabled here instead of dlss balanced um but yeah this is not worth enabling for either card in my opinion ray tracing is just best left off across the board at this tier of gpu Let's start off then with best case scenario, the PCIe 4.0 results. This is where the 6500 XT is at its best. And as I said before, the 3050 isn't really impacted between uh, 3.0 and 4.0 modes because it's a PCIe X8 card. As you can see here though, Cyberpunk 2077 with the medium settings, the 3050 6 gig hit 54 on average with a 1% low of 40 and a 0.1% low of 26. The 6500 XT on the other hand hit just 46 frames per second, still playable to an extent with a 1% low of 30 and a 0.1% low of 21. These are the more problematic figures of the three here because these represent a non consistent experience there are a lot more dips and drops here this is better suited to the low settings but it just goes to show what happens when you crank things up a bit with this 4 gig card. Forza Horizon 5 1080p with a high preset performed pretty well on both in PCIe 4.0 mode 72 fps on average for the 6500 XT but 85 with the 3050 6 gig. As you can see the percentile figures were a lot better with the 6 gig 3050 73 and 71 respectively whereas with the 6500 XT they sat at 60 and 31 so some notable problems here but it was still a playable experience. Red Dead Redemption 2 next with the Xbox One X equivalent console settings. The 3050 delivered at least 60 frames per second, 68 FPS to be precise. The 1% low was 59 and the 0.1% low was 55. On the other hand, we have the 6500 XT, which despite running in PCIe 4 mode, so the better uh, of the two scenarios here. We are VRAM limited, I think. So 63 FPS as an average, which was close to the 3050, but the percentile lows tell a very different story, 30 and 29. I believe there's an 8 gig 6500 XT in the wild somewhere. I think it's only ASRock that makes it. Um, not sure if I've seen or heard of any others, but it would be interesting to compare the two and see just how well that one does and then jump back into a comparison between that and the 3050 as well. See if the 8 gigs of VRAM actually helps it out because I'm sure it does quite a lot in some scenarios. We have Starfield next, PCIe 4 mode of course. This was a very close result with 41 FPS for the 3050, a 1% low of 33 and a 0.1% low of 32. With the AMD 6500 XT, we saw 40 FPS as an average, so just one FPS less. The same figure for the 1% score, so 33. And when it came to that 0.1% low, we had 30. So not really any different here. Starfield was what I'd call playable on both cards, but there will be a lack of consistency in and around those busier areas. We're definitely better suited to the lowest in-game settings here. 
Finally, we have the Blacksmith Benchmark tool. I've added this. I'm not sure if this is representative of the final game, of course, but it's definitely handy here to compare our two GPUs. With the 3050, we saw 46 FPS on average, a 1% low of 39 and 0.1% low of 34. The 6500 XT saw 41 FPS, so not too different, a 1% low of 37 and a 0.1% low of 34, the same as the 3050. I think if you're limiting yourself to low settings in terms of a comparison, then the results will be closer. But another point I'd like to make is that the 3050 is capable of higher than low settings. I mean, you can turn it up to medium and you're not gonna see as many problems as you would with the 6500 XT. The higher we go in terms of the settings, the more the comparison aspect falls apart and the 6500 XT falls behind, unfortunately. At least this four gig version does. But it's about to get a little worse as we switch to the 3.0 PCIe results. We'll run through those quickly now. So as I mentioned before, the 3050 wasn't really affected by the change to PCIe 3.0, not as much as the 6500 XT anyway, because we have eight PCIe lanes instead of four. So 54 is an average here, a 1% of 39 and a 0.1% of 26 for the 3050. 6500 XT this time around hit 42 FPS on average, a 1% of 27 and a 0.1% of 23. So this was a lot less consistent experience throughout and it definitely felt like it too. Back in Fort so now the 3050 hit 84 FPS on average, it got a 1% low of 73, and we saw a 1% low, sorry, 0.1% low of 71. The 6500 XT completely fell apart here, 50 FPS on average. It's still playable, you know, to an extent, uh, but it's mainly the percentile figures that throw me off a little bit in terms of the gameplay. So we have a 1% low of 40 and a 0.1% low of 23. This is going to be felt a lot more during actual gameplay rather than the in game benchmark. Uh, because this is quite a significant difference between these two percentile lows here. As I said, still playable, but for similar money, I'd get the 3050. Don't forget we also have no PCIe Express connector on that one as well, so it's better suited to a wider range of systems, or you can go used market, get yourself a second-hand 1080 for probably what is a similar price, maybe even less, if you're not concerned about power consumption and you have the PSU connectors for it. Back in Red Dead Redemption 2, 67 FPS for the 3015 PCIe 3 mode, a 1% low of 56 and a 0.1% low of 53. The 6500 XT hit just 49 FPS this time around with a 1% low of 22 and a 0.1% low of 21. This felt pretty bad, uh, to be honest. We Not only have we got a VRAM limitation here at these settings, but we also have the bandwidth limitation as well in PCIe 3.0 mode. Back in Starfield, 40 FPS for the 3056 gig. 33 is that 1% low and 31 is the 0.1% low. Not too bad for the 6500 XT. I think we run into a VRAM limitation before anything else, to be fair. So the car's not bothered about the bandwidth problems. It's just struggling as it is. So 37 FPS, or it may just not be... Um, as affected by such a thing as other games. You know, every game is different, of course. So as I said, 37 FPS here, a 1% low of 30 and a 0.1% low of 28. So not too dissimilar from the 3050 once again. Uh, if you're looking to play Starfield on either of these cards, then you can expect at least 30 FPS in a PCIe 3.0 or 4.0 system, providing your CPU is up to the task. And to finalise, we'll run through the Black Myth benchmark tool again, 1080p low preset, 45 for the 3050 with a 1% low of 38 and a 0.1% low of 35. The 6500 XT hit 38 frames per second, so it wasn't worlds away to be fair, but the average for the 6500 XT was the same as the 1% figure for the 3050, so bear that in mind. As for the 0.1% figure of 27, well, it means that the performance wasn't too horrible, but as I mentioned before, this may differ significantly from the full release. And I'll add that to the benchmark roster once I purchase it. But there we go. Is this what you expected? I didn't know what to expect, to be fair. I thought that the 3050 would pull ahead, certainly in PCIe 3.0 mode, um, and the results show that, but it was generally the better card throughout. In fact, I think every single result swung in favour of the 3050 and I don't think it's a bad card to be fair I mean it doesn't have a PCI Express connector it can be slotted into most machines and you can run it on an OEM PSU you haven't got to worry about that six pin it's just too expensive in a lot of regions and 
that can sometimes be the case with a lot of these uh, modern so-called entry level or budget cards but let me know what you think down below in the comments of course thank you as always for watching and hopefully i'll see all of you next time